I hope you never have to go through a situation like this, but if you have enough properties or a troublesome tenant, there may come a day when you are served a security deposit related summons from an attorney on behalf of one of your prior tenants. And usually it'll be a kick in the teeth because that tenant will have left you with a bunch of damages that you had to deduct from their security deposit for. If you watched our previous video about security deposit claims, you'll already know some of the correct legal procedures for putting a claim on a deposit in Florida. Once you have sent off the certified mail claim form with return receipt, the tenant has 15 days to write back from the day they received the notice. That's why we use a return receipt by US Mail to let us know what date the tenant received the claim form and the refund check if you're returning a partial deposit. Then we count from that day at least 15 days. Don't spend that claim money yet. Save it in your escrow account because it still belongs to the tenant until the claim process is completely over. If the tenant does not write back, just transfer the monies over to your regular operating bank account and use those funds for the necessary repairs. If the tenant sends you a dispute letter, it could be just a few words long, or it could be a few pages, but you'll need to go through it to find exactly what claims they are disputing. Then go back and triple check those claims that you have made to make sure that you have enough clear evidence to show a judge that the claim you made was actual damage. In our case, we received a short, vague letter from the prior tenant to say she was disputing the claim. We had a few items on the claim form, so this meant she was just disputing everything. In this tenant's case, it was obvious to us after the case that she knew the attorney, and this tactic was already planned from the get. From the time we received the court papers to the trial date, it was about 60 days. The problem is with Florida law as it currently stands that if the tenant takes the case to court and the judge does not agree with just one of your itemized deposit claims, the tenant's attorney can then claim all their attorney's fees, which can run up to thousands of dollars. So it's up to the judge to find out what amount is reasonable, but most of the time they approve the fees. As ridiculous as this sounds, it is true, and in our opinion, lawmakers need to make some serious changes in order to protect Florida landlords from this. In the meantime, however, we are stuck with it, so therefore, you need to make sure that you have everything to make a strong case to a judge. You cannot just walk into the court and tell them what happened. You have to have actual, factual evidence to show it. Not just written inspection reports, but real before and after photos or video to show the judge what the property looked like beforehand and what damages were there immediately after the tenant vacated. The judge has never been to the property before, so he or she doesn't know anything about the condition of the place when the tenant moved in or out. We actually have to show the judge a clear picture of this. Photos or video are the best way, along with good documentation and receipts for actual repairs can help your case. So once you're in front of the judge, the tenant or their attorney will present their case and then you will have a chance to present your side. You must stick completely to the facts and don't go into how emotional you were and how the situation made you feel, etc. The judge is not interested in any of that. They only want to see the evidence and hear the factual details of the claim and any damages that were made. Your lease will also come in useful to show the judge the mandatory charges agreed to ahead of time, such as any move out cleaning charges, carpet cleaning, lock changes, etc. Our landlord employed their own attorney who gathered all of the evidence, photos, inspections, lease, dispute letter, and a copy of the claim form and certified mail receipt, and arranged them in a labeled binder so it was easy to read and found, find everything in court. Three copies of this binder uh, were needed to present one to the judge, one to the tenant's attorney, and one for the, the, ourselves. The judge will ask you and the tenant questions, and you must give the tenant time to talk to the judge without you interrupting. This is more difficult than it sounds when the other party is telling only their side of the story or just making up lies. But you'll have your time to present your side, so Use it efficiently and stick to the facts. 
Keep it professional, calm and collected in the way that you present yourself to the judge. Once the judge collects all the information he or she needs, they will make a decision. They will usually go through each claim item separately, so keep the number of claims to a minimum. The more claims you have on a deposit claim form, the more chances you have of losing the case. That's a very important point. All was going well with this particular case until the judge felt, in his opinion, two of the items on the claim form were not the tenant's responsibility. One of these was rekeying the locks, even though the tenant didn't actually return all the keys at the end of the move out. And that's a provision in our actual lease. The other was that the tenant had left many weeds on the private patio and they had left them grow to about two or three t feet tall and we had to have a handyman remove these at a cost. Therefore, from the $600 security deposit claim, the judge approved about $500. And unfortunately, although it felt like the landlord had won the case, they had not. Although we won most of the claims, if only one claim item is won by the tenant, it means they actually won the entire case and then their attorney can claim attorney's fees at a later time. This is the injustice that faces many Florida landlords, that even when you have detailed documentation and photos, the judge can weigh in their own personal feelings and make a decision that surprises you. The law firm we use for our management business has over 30 years experience dealing with landlord-tenant law and they advise landlords to avoid court and settle whenever possible. Supplying the tenant with a copy of the proof of damages, like the inspection photos and report and possibly receipts up front, can help prevent them from moving forward with court action. If a tenant loses, they can end up paying your attorney's fees also. There was a case in Florida where a judge ordered a landlord to pay $15,000 attorney's fees to the tenant. We don't want this to happen to you, so be cautious with your deposit claims and do not get emotionally involved when damages occur. Check us out on the web for more useful landlord tips and property management advice at www.wemanageorlando.com.